not be here this evening. Um, so sorry about that, Ian. <laughs> Ian, no riots. No riots. I promise. Uh, I am no Thomas, Thomas DeJoy, but we will get work done today. All right. So it looks like. Have you guys added walls yet? If someone could. About the decision about the letter openers. Okay, you guys seem like you have fun at this webinar. Uh, let Mr. DeToy know how attached you are. Okay. Yes, we have made walls. We made them and we made the win and lose UI. Okay. All right, sorry, Sarah. We I think we're a little ahead of the, the wall, uh, the sphere moving. Okay, so you guys have rise. Oh wow, you guys are super past this. Okay. That's my letter letter openers. Oh, did you 3D print them? This is dangerous. All right. So you all, we have a score. So someone, I, I understand it's an inside joke. I'm good. Uh, All right, we're gonna move on. Gotcha. Okay, this screen, game over screen. Um, this works for you all. Yes. Can I get a yes or no? You said um, a UI, a win and lose UI. We did this, cool. All right. Power ups. Yes or no? Okay. All right, there. Okay, we're going to start with power-ups. This seems to be the place that you kind of started. I'm just going to start from the beginning since I'm not, you know, exactly sure. The goal the, the goal for this is to basically, uh, this is just a, a simple example, but you're really just learning how to create different events happening when, um, to, when a collision happens, uh, when, you know, your player collides with a trigger object. So keep an open mind on what you can create. So go ahead, open Unity. That's probably one step ahead of me here. Okay, so this is actually what you guys are going to be designing very soon. That's pretty neat. But for right now, let me navigate back to scene one.
There we go. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do uh, is create uh, the special object for you guys to pick up. So, uh, you're going to go into your materials folder and right click to create a new material. You're going to call this one prize color. Wait, nope. You're going to call this one power up. Just like you see here on my screen, I already have one called power up. Change it to something shiny uh, and a different color from the rest of the cubes that you have. So mine I made gold and I added metallic to its smoothness to give it a little bit of a shiny uh, coloring. And if you remember, we have a, a prefab set up for the prizes, but we just want one of our prizes to be a power up. So you're not going to click and drag this onto the prefab asset. You're going to just click and drag it onto one of the cubes in your scene. Um, I'm not sure if Mr. DeToy gave you this advice. Since at the beginning of the game, uh, I recommend that you have your game and your scene right next to each other, just so that you can differentiate the difference between you editing this scene and what the viewer or the your player will actually see. But at this point, you should be a little bit more familiar with how the camera works, etc. So I recommend that you actually move the game tab back um, as its own tab and, and just focus on the scene tab now. And you can always kind of check back on what it will look like, but just gives you a bigger view of your plane. Uh, go ahead and raise your hand once you've created this new material in your materials folder and you've added it to one of your power-ups. Or to one, I'm sorry, to one of your prizes. Wow, this is a big crowd for this webinar. All right, just waiting on a couple more hands here. Great. Okay. The next thing that you're going to do, you're going to select whichever prize it was that you edited, um, and that should come up over on your hierarchy window to the left, and you're going to rename that one Power Up. Uh, be careful with your spelling here, your capitalization. As a reminder on how to rename something, you just select its name in the hierarchy window, and you can either kind of double click in this mysteriously timed way, or you can hit enter on your keyboard. All right, so the basic concept, uh, if you guys remember with the prizes, is that they are – okay, they have this rigid body, which allows it to interact um, – or this collider, I should say – that allows it to interact with um, something else. And in this case, it's a trigger, uh, which means that this uh, – the script in the sphere is listening for triggers. It has that on trigger enter as one of its functions. Um, and in this case, it's listening for the certain tag called pickup. Well, we're going to add a new tag just to our power up called power up. So to do that, you add the tag and you're going to call this one power up, no space, the P and the U capitalized.
Um, so this kind of menu is a little strange. To get back to your power up, you're just going to have to click on it again, and it'll bring you back to its inspection window. And then select the power up tag from the drop down. Raise your hand once you've done that. Sorry, I'm not familiar with all your names. No, it, did you just get here? I had my number increased by one. <laughs> Good, Sarah, I'm glad. Hey, Noah, did you just arrive? Now, catch me up on what your story is if, if you are doing this or if you need help on another part, but we're going to keep going with the scripting. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything here. So uh, now we're going to navigate to our player move script. We're not going to need a new script. Um, we're just going to go back to the player move script. And we're going to shift our code around a little bit. Right now we have... Uh, whenever our sphere, or really whenever, whatever uh, game object this script is a component for, whenever it interacts with a collider on trigger enter, a collider that is a trigger, which you see in that higher, uh, in the inspector window, is trigger. Whenever they collide, um, it's going to check to see the tag of that game object. Um, and if it's pick up, many things happen. We're going to switch it around here so that it's going to check to see um, if that game object tag is pick up. And I want you to add an else if line. Now, if you're familiar with Python, that's elif. Uh, they shorten it. But here we have else space if, and then the condition within those parentheses. It's going to check to see if the tag is power up. And we're going to have a different sequence that will be run if that object that it collides with is a power-up. Oh, hey, Noah. Okay, I was just curious because um, I was asking people to raise their hands once they're ready, but we're, we're in the player move script right now, and we're adding to it and shifting the on trigger enter code. All right, so let me explain this a little bit. What we're going to do here, we have... Um, if the game object uh, tag is pick up, then we want to set that game object to to um, to not active. We want to basically make that cube disappear, and we want to increase um, the we want to call this function set count text, and this is the function that we defined below. And that is going to increase the count by one, change the text 
to be count plus whatever that variable currently is. And then notice that I also changed and, and moved the if statement that used to be up here in this original if. I moved it down to the set count text. And the reason I did that is um, typically in coding, you want to be as efficient as possible. You don't want to have more lines than you need to. So if you want your power up to also increase the score, you don't want to have to add the if then check in both this if and this else if statement. So you're just going to run set count text, the function that you defined either way. So currently, there's no difference. Right now, we're going to, in the next slide, we're going to add a difference here. But currently, if, if the tag reads pick up or if the tag reads power up, same lines of, of code are run. So uh, go ahead and raise your hand when you have kind of modified your code to read this. Be really careful with your curly braces. Note that this if and else if are in the on trigger enter. And this, um, these lines of code, including this if, are within the function set count text. So this should take some time. Raise your hand when you're ready. Sarah, uh, I, I think the full code that um, I have is more complex than this code. So I cannot. I do not have the full code that shows the sphere moving in addition to this without having more information than, than y'all need right now. Um, and, and, yeah, just so you think I'm not nodding off here, I'm just waiting for the for you all to type this out. Sarah, if you want, let me open.
Okay, let's see. I don't have just the like move the sphere code. Um, and so there are chunks that you're just going to need to watch the recording for or else it won't it won't work because you have to like attach your um, UI objects to your code and, and such. So I'm sorry, I'm trying to think of a way that I can get you working, but pretty much nothing is can be done independently in um, in Unity. So I'm just waiting on, I guess, Jeremy's hand. Uh, Jeremy, just give me a heads up, kind of on. Oh, I don't want to move on. Okay. Oh, okay, here we go. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do, we are going to increase the speed by 200. Uh, and actually, let's make it really noticeable here. Say increase the speed by 400. You're just going to add one line here. Speed plus equals 400. And you defined speed a while back. This goes in your power up. Um, and then up at the top, where you have your variable definitions, We'll fix that in just a second. We're going to add uh, two more lines of code. We're going to add debug log lines to make sure that our code is working. Uh, hey, Steven, I think you have um, two two curly braces before the else if, because you, if you look at this, you don't want two curly braces before the else if, because that's going to mean that this won't happen and your function on trigger enter. Um, think about these function lines, like those uh, header blocks in Scratch, where something would happen if the spacebar was pressed, or if the green flag was clicked, uh, it's going to run this sequence of code if it runs into an object that has a trigger. So you want this else if to be part of this function. Well, Stephen, um, you probably have a ton of errors for, from something different than, than that. <laughs> You can send me your code if you want, but this is the correct way to code it. All right, Stephen, well, still send me your code if you'd like, and I can help you find the error, but this does need to be part of the onTriggerEnter function. Steven. Yes, we still have that. It's down here now. So if you look, we, we moved that line of code because you don't want to have that twice. So let me see if I can draw this out for you.
we have our function on trigger enter and our function on set count text. On trigger enter is a built-in function for the game and set count text is a function that we made. We call it both times either, you know, if the object that we collided with is tagged pickup or if the object that we collided with is, is power up, we call set count text. Set count text is down here. So, okay, cool. <laughs> Firefox user, okay. Okay, I didn't have that code set count text, but I moved it and it's good, cool. Curly braces will drive you insane. All right, let's go look at the function start and within ELSIF. And I told you guys add 400 to your speed because I think it's just going to be a little bit more noticeable. You are going to want to add um, these debug lines that are just going to say your speed at the start of the game and if you hit the power up. And that's to make sure it's working. Um, and then go ahead and try it out. Uh, I would select the sphere and get your code, the speed, to be a little slower. So I'm going to set my speed to, to be 400 at the start instead of like 600 or whatever it's set to currently. And then I'm playing the game, you can see mine has sound effects, which you'll, you'll be able to add. And mine doesn't have the W. Interesting. And you'll look, if you look at your console, it should say the speed at the beginning and at the end. Or not at the end, but whenever you hit the thing. I lost. Can I see the other line, the other lines of code? I never had the chance to write them. Yes. Sorry about that. They're just, they're just kind of simple debug lines. So you've, the only ones you're adding here are these. And whatever value is stored to speed at that moment. No worries. Um, and raise your hand once you got it working. You should get this.
Steven, where did you add the speed line to? Um, and or you may have changed All right, Steven, take a look at your code, or I'm sorry, at your Unity, and check like the tag on prize. The tag on prize should still be pickup. You should have only changed the tag for the one cube that you called power up. That one should be power up. All right, if you Check the tags, and that looks good. Then, the speed should only be increasing. Check to make sure your curly braces under the else if um, are contained so that set this function set count isn't contained in that. Basically now, uh, both of these should just be in the on trigger enter. Comment, you just need to change the tag of the power up object to be power up and make it a different color so as not to confuse everyone in your game. And to do that, you add a new material. Steven, send me your code if you don't mind. Just copy it into the box. Just this part from function on trigger enter down to so set context. Coleman, did you make a new power up? Coleman. You send me your code as well. Do you have set object, like here, do you have it um, setting the game object to false? Okay, you changed the price? Okay, that's right, that's good. I don't know, Stephen, that should work. Yeah, it looks like um, he's having, yeah, where does this go to? Okay, this is encasing that. This one finishes this if statement, which is contained within this if statement. So it just text checks to see if count is greater than or equal to nine as long as count text isn't equal to nothing or zero. Which isn't exactly how I wrote it, but it's great. Coleman, you can. That seems a little strange. You, could, you can go ahead and copy your code. Steven. Are you sure? So what you're saying is you have debug.log speed and that happens. You can look at your console on the game and it says 400 at the start of the game. And then as when you keep hitting every one, it increases by 400 every time.
Steven, can I look at your screen? Coleman, I'll look at your screen in just a moment. Okay. Um, click on a uh, prize. Okay, I see that down there. Click on prize one. Uh, you shouldn't have a semicolon after your condition, else if. But I don't think that's giving you the problem, but that is just true. I I'm not sure if you're talking to. I cannot hear you, but sometimes my volume gets gets weird. You very well could be speaking, but I cannot hear you. Hey, well, I'm not sure. I'll keep looking at this, but I'm going to take the, yeah. And Coleman, we're going to check out your screen next. Oh, it fixed it. Oh, OK. Good. Um, your screen is moving rather slowly on my computer. My computer is slow. All right, Coleman, I'm going to make you presenter. If you don't want to be, if, like, if you don't want me to see your screen, then just hit no. And it's no issue. And we'll just keep going. Um, 
Oh, wow, well, look at those walls. That's cool. Okay. You got like a challenging terrain there. All right. So your power up is tagged power up. That looks good. Your set contact speed. Oh. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that all looks good. So show me your script, please. Okay, let's see here. If you want to pick up boom sound. Uh, and when you play the game, it just won't pick anything up? Um, it won't pick. Sorry, Steven. I'm doing my best. Oh, it'll pick up the prizes, but not, okay. Oh, oh, okay, here's what it is. Coleman, you have, your curly braces are, are not set up right. So currently, it is only checking to see if the collider is power up if it's collided with something called pickup. See how you have an if statement within your if statement? You need a second curly brace after that if count greater than or equal to nine. You need a second closing curly brace after that. Not there. Hold on. I'm going to take this screen back, Coleman, and I'm going to show you, okay? Because I think that, yeah, my computer does not like handling watching someone else's computer. So Coleman, what you have is like this. Uh, you have this if then statement still in your this one. Okay, what you need to do is add this second curly, right now you don't have a second curly brace. So all of this is within this, this it sequence. You need to add a second curly brace after this chunk here. And that means, Coleman, since you're not getting any errors right now, you're going to have to delete one of your curly braces down here. Coleman, what I want you to look at, if you click on one curly brace, it shows you where its pair is. So you want this little if statement to be together. You want all of this to be within this first if game object tag is pick up. Um, and you want both the if and the else if to be within the func function on trigger enter. All right, so try that.
Oh, good. All right. So hopefully that solved that problem. I'm going to move mine back. Come and keep me up to date. Everybody else, eyes on my screen for a second. I'm going to set you guys up to start creating your own terrain. Uh, but to do that, I don't know who we lost. Okay, what you're going to have to do is first make a copy of your scene. This is super important because we're going to be deleting things. So file, save scene as, and then you're going to call your scene two. I already have a scene two, so I'm going to call mine scene four. But you should call yours scene two. Okay, once you are working in a copied scene, so that you know you can go back to your original and have this beautiful working game, you are going to delete your plane by right-clicking, delete, and you're going to delete your walls by right-clicking, delete. Scary stuff. Only do that if you are working from scene two or scene three. Or else you will not be able to get those things back. You are then going to go in and add a 3D game object called Terrain. And it should come on, it looks like this giant white plane. Double click to get a good view of it here. And there's a lot of cool things you can do with terrain. I'm going to show you a couple of them now. Select your terrain, and in the inspector window, uh, you'll see one that's called Raise Earth. It's the first option here under terrain. Uh, and what you can do is change your brush size and your opacity or like kind of how much it's going to affect the earth. 100% uh, would be like it's going to make a really big change where a smaller number like 20 means it's going to make a subtle change. And you can change your brush too um, depending on what you want. And you can change your world. Add mountains, add shapes. You can add a star if that's what you're into. <laughs> Again, how I did this, I first, very important, created a copy of my scene. Then, some weird hills over there, I uh, added, a th uh, I deleted some stuff, I deleted my walls in my plane, and I added a 3D game object called Terrain, and I got to a good view of it, and now I'm raising Terrain. You can also lower Terrain by holding Shift down. Sure, Coleman, I can do that. Send me your code. But Coleman, it's really important too that you're looking to try to figure out where it is. Like this, you know, if that makes sense. Like I'll show you if you paste your code, I can send it back. Um, but it's important to try to like find it too.
Yeah, Coleman, I, I, I saw that. Send me your code. Okay. Okay, uh, back on the terrain for a moment. You can also make it, instead of this polar tundra, you can paint your ground, make it grassy, or something like that. Um, we're gonna go, I'm gonna show you this real fast. You click the little paintbrush, you hit edit textures, and you know what I'm realizing? We don't have our textures. Go to Assets, Import Package, Environment. Assets, Import Package, Environment. And that's probably where we're going to end today. And if Mr. Detroit is back on Wednesday, hopefully uh, he can help you create your own little worlds with uh, grass and, and trees and, and all sorts of stuff. But you're going to need the Environment Package. So you um, hit this, and then it's going to say, do you want to import all, and you do. Coleman, okay. well, I'm working on yours currently. Oh, you're fine, Coleman. I, I figured. I thought you were just repeating. Okay, let's see here. I'm trying to send it. Okay. All right. Coleman, this is your text. Um, but it's not letting me, hold on. This is why I want pages document, but it will not let me do that. Yeah, Sarah, that sounds like a good idea. I know. I'll just do it in here. All right, Coleman. I do want you to look at this when I make this change. Oh, I, I don't think it sent me the whole code. I need uh, everything from, just go ahead and in your code from LSIF downwards. I'll delete this one. Okay. Great. <laughs> okay. Coleman. This is your entire on trigger enter code. What I, um, this all right here. I can tell because my mouse is on this curly brace and it shows me that this orange pair is pair. Okay. So what this is saying is when your sphere hits a collider, that's a trigger. We want it to check to see if that game object has the tag pick up or if it has the tag power up. Currently, because of the way yours is set up, all of this code is going to be run if and only if the game object it collides with is pick up. You need a curly brace after this so that this is the only code that gets run. But now we have an extra curly brace down here in this set of three. So you delete that one. I'm just going to send this back to you. It's fixed now. I hope that made sense. It's kind of hard. I, I keep uh, using my fingers to try to show stuff. And uh, it's not going to work for you. Uh, Coleman, I don't think that that was probably all of the code. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send it from function on trigger enter down to the end. 
because it should send all of them. Sarah, I am sorry that you were lost. Let me get you caught up. All right, it's 8.01, so I'm going to jump off. Unless anyone else has a question, they can't get their game working. Other than Sarah, Sarah, I'm sorry. I wish you the best of luck getting your code working soon. But if you watch those videos, you should be able to get it. All right, it's been a pleasure working with y'all. I uh, hope Mr. The Toy is, is back on his feet soon. Steel motor openers. I'll send him that message, Sarah. Have a wonderful evening.